Hello everyone, my name is Anaya Rege and today my colleague Mala Neverthi and I will be discussing how the Latin American population is affected by venous thromboembolism or VTE. Mala, do you mind giving us a little bit of background information on the topic? Absolutely. VTE occurs when clots form in blood vessels. They can be separated into two distinct categories, deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. Wow. And does VTE impact specific demographics in particular? No, VTE can actually affect anyone. However, we've decided to inspect the Latin population in particular to see if they have any risk factors that make them more prone to developing VTE. What can you tell me about the Latin American population in general? The Latin American population is incredibly culturally diverse, with roots tracing back all over the world. Much of their culture is centered around South and Central America and the Caribbean, and they primarily speak either Spanish or Portuguese. Interesting. And is there anything that makes them more susceptible to BTE? They are often at a higher risk for thrombosis because they develop habits of smoking and drinking at a young age when their bodies aren't yet fully developed. That's a concerning issue. How many Latin American people are affected by this condition? Approximately 55 out of every 100,000 Latinos suffer from a thrombotic episode. This can be translated to around 0.93% of the Latin American population. Okay, and are Latinos disproportionately affected in comparison to other cases? I'm glad you asked. Actually, Latinos are the least affected by VTE compared to other races. Very few Latinos suffer from VTE because of how genetics and conditions affect them. Mala, what can you tell us about how the Latin American population is distributed throughout the U.S.? In the United States, most of the Latino population is centered around the Southwest states, including Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, California, and Nevada. There's also a large concentration of people in Florida, as well as other urban states like Illinois and New York. And what are some common physical characteristics of Latinos? Most Latinos have brown eyes. In terms of height, the average man is around five foot seven, while the average woman is around five foot three. Are there any specific conditions that the Latin American population is more likely to have? As a matter of fact, yes. Conditions like obesity and diabetes are higher in the Latino population than other demographics. Another condition they are more likely to have is VTE. Within the Latino population, does gender play into account when looking at the people affected by VTE? Yes, actually. We typically tend to see Latino males more affected by thrombotic conditions than women. That is very interesting. Do you have any ideas why this might be? Yes, because males are more likely to participate in risk factors that increase their chances of VTE, such as drinking and smoking. Intriguing. Could you elaborate on the risk factors that males more commonly possess? Males are more commonly diagnosed with obesity and diabetes compared to female Hispanics. Both of these conditions can strongly impact VTE risks and future health outcomes. Is there a large divide between the amount of men and women affected, or is there only a slight difference? There's actually quite a significant difference. Almost 64% of the cases reported for VTE are males, while the remaining 36% are women. We know that VTE can, in theory, affect anyone, but are there any age groups that are more likely to get the disease? Absolutely. While anyone can get VTE, you are far more likely to get it in the later stages of your life. This is due to an increased number of coagulating proteins. What does it mean to have more coagulating proteins? This means the blood is more likely to clot, and this increases the incidence of thrombosis. That makes sense. How does this affect the Latin population in particular? 
Prior to the age of 80, the incidence rate of VTE in Latinos is only 0.4%, while at the age of 80, the incidence rates rise to around 0.5 or 0.6%. Interesting. And how does that compare to others in the United States? The Latin population actually has a much lower incidence rate of VTE than many Americans around the U.S. That's fascinating. However, a large number of Latinos are still affected. Does this group face any challenges that prevent them from receiving suitable health care? Yes. The cost and the ability to access knowledge and medication is difficult. Additionally, several medical facilities are incapable of providing care for VTE or lack employees or knowledge. The language barrier for many Latinos must be difficult as well, right? Correct. Several patients have a difficult time understanding healthcare information, making the process of taking medication regularly difficult. Does financing play a part in their challenges as well? Unfortunately, yes. Some Latinos do not have sufficient funding for even a partial treatment, making the treatment overall ineffective at preventing VTE. What are some of the methods that can be used to predict whether or not someone has VTE? One of the most popular methods is the use of the Caprini score. The Caprini score assesses risk factors on a scale of one to five, five being the highest risk and one being the lowest risk. That sounds like a great way to assess those VTE risks. Are there any other methods that can be used? Yes, the Wells DVT score can also be used to determine whether a patient is at high risk for DVT. Some of the factors that this score takes into account are calf swelling and paralysis. This predicts the probability of contracting DVT. Scores between negative two and zero show a low probability of contracting DVT. Scores of one or two indicate a moderate probability and three to eight points indicate a high probability. The Wells PE score, also known as the Geneva score, has a different scoring system. A score of zero or one indicates low risk, two through six indicates a moderate risk, and anything above six indicates a high risk. Wow, that was a lot of information. Let me make sure I heard that right. So if I have a Wells PE score of six or higher, I'm at a high risk of DVT? Yes, that's correct. Cool. After identifying one has VTE, how can it be treated? VTE can be treated in a number of different ways. One way it can be treated is through the initiation of anticoagulant agents, such as heparin, low molecular weight heparin, or LMWH, and Fonda Paramix, followed by oral warfarin. Oh, that seems like an effective plan. What is another way this condition can be treated? Another way we can treat VTE is through the administration of RTPA, which stands for recombinant tissue plasminogen activator. This works to break the clot, restore the blood flow in the vessel, and convert plasminogen into plasmin, and this breaks the clot. Wow, it's amazing how our bodies are capable of such intricate systems. Are there any other treatment options? I agree. The systems inside our body are so specific and complex. To answer your question, yes. A patient can opt for an inferior vena cava, or IBC filter, to prevent current and future clots from traveling to the heart. Okay, these all seem fairly complicated. Are there any easier methods? A patient can be described direct oral anticoagulants, or DOAX. And what are some of the advantages of DOAX? The DOAX have an advantage of having an ease of administration lack of dietary restrictions that are common with warfarin, and not requiring frequent blood monitoring. Wow, DOAC seemed like a great option for treating VTE. Are there any challenges that accompany taking a DOAC? Yes. As many of us know, all medications have some drawbacks. One of the greatest drawbacks of DOACs is the economic barrier due to its high costs. Great point, Mala. Cost is often a huge deterrent for working class communities. What are some other challenges in the use of DOAX? Another huge barrier is the lack of access to clinics and facilities that can administer DOAX. Certain facilities lack electricity and sanitation, which inhibits quality healthcare. Rural areas can also lack anticoagulation clinics. That makes sense. Patients need to have high accessibility 
need to have accessibility to high quality facilities. Anything else? Overall, if patients are uneducated on BTE and other diseases, they may be too late to consult specialists and as a result have limited and poor treatment options. To conclude, Latinos are less prone to BTE than other ethnicities and have a lower incidence rate than other ethnicities. Poor lifestyle among the Latinos is one of the major factors that leads to BTE. Male Latinos are at a higher risk than female Latinos due to poor life choices such as smoking. Genetic factors have a strong correlation with the incident rates of BTE in Latinos. Race or ethnicity should be considered as an important factor in the risk stratification of patients with suspected BTE or patients at some risk for developing BTE. Thank you, Mala, for all of your impressive insight. Of course, Anaya. We hope you leave here today with a better understanding of BTE and how it affects the Latino population. Thank you for your time. देसी रेडियो सॉलिड कलेक्शन है सुरों के एक्शन है दिल से कनेक्शन है सॉन्ग सिलेक्शन है शुद्ध देसी रेडियो शुद्ध देसी रेडियो